This video is going to show you how to install the new Flexalite compact electric fan controller and relay kit. There's two different versions, one with a push-in probe and one with a thread-in probe. We're going to show the steps to install both of those. It's a very straightforward process, very easy to do, and the kit comes with everything that you'll need. <laughs> I'm gonna show you some steps of the installation here on the table uh, because it's a little easier to show here rather than in the vehicle and the rest will show the installation on this old Jeep. Uh, but the installation steps are gonna be the same no matter what type of vehicle you have. Let's walk through the wire connections that you're gonna to need to make. There are four connections that you must make in order for this to operate properly. In addition, there's two optional wires that you may or may not connect depending on what you wanna do and the type of vehicle you're installing this kit on. The heavy gauge blue wire is your power supply that will connect to the electric fan. So it will be connected to the positive lead to your electric fan. The yellow wire is going to be connected to keyed 12 volt source. That we're going to look in the fuse box for a fuse or power tap that only is powered when the key is in the on position. The large gauge red wire is the positive power supply for the electric fan controller. So that's gonna be connected directly to the battery. The other required wire is the black, and this is the ground for this system. One of the optional wires is the green lead. This will be connected to the positive wire that goes to the air conditioning clutch. The other optional connection is the white wire. This can be hooked to a toggle switch so that whenever 12 volts is applied to this, it will turn the electric fan on. To make the electrical connectors, you're gonna need a good set of electrical pliers. Uh, usually this will suffice. We also use this for a little bit more secure crimping, but this one crimps as well. For the electric fan, you have two connections to make. One is the ground. This is going to be grounded to the chassis near where the fan is mounted. The other one is the power supply wire for the electric fan. On your controller, that is going to be the blue wire. So we wanna find the blue wire. For all the electrical connections, you want to follow this same process. You wanna strip about 3 eighths of an inch of insulation from the end of the wire. And then twist the wires just slightly to keep them together. And then insert, in this case we're using a butt connector, insert the butt connector over it until it's inserted halfway in. There's a stop to keep the wires from going too far in. And then we use these crimpers for non-soldered connections. And you wanna crimp on the half of the connector that has the wire. Now we're gonna clean up the end of the power wire on the fan. You always wanna make sure you've got good, clean, fresh wires to work with there. Same process here, we're going to strip about 3 eighths of an inch of wire from this, or insulation. Insert the wire into the crimp fitting. And make a firm connection. Test the connection by pulling on the wires, doesn't come apart. Then to finish this, wrap electrical tape around it in order to keep moisture out of this and to give this additional strength. There are a few things for you to consider when choosing a location to mount the controller. It's a compact unit, so it doesn't take up a lot of space under hood, but you need to make sure that the wire is gonna be long enough to reach everywhere where you need to make a connection. You also want to check to make sure that it's close enough that the push-in probe will reach the proper location in the radiator, or if it's a thread-in probe that you'll be able to put the temperature probe in the engine in the proper location. Something else you wanna keep in mind when you're choosing the mounting location is that you don't wanna to be too close to very hot sources such as the exhaust header tube or right next to the radiator. Keep it away from road debris and excessive water that can splash up as you drive. The controller is water resistant, but it's not waterproof. Do not mount the controller in a way that allows water to pool around the terminals. With the module in place, Take a pen and mark the location of the holes that you're going to drill. You'll use an eighth inch drill bit. Be careful that there's nothing on the back side that you're gonna drill into. On this vehicle, there's nothing back here. It just goes into the uh, fender well. 
Next, you're going to want to find a switched 12 volt source to connect the yellow wire to. It's important that you find a circuit that is only hot or has 12 volts when the key is turned on. Otherwise, a fan can turn on at any time whether the ignition is turned on or not. In the hardware kit, you're going to find three different uh, components that will help you tap into that keyed 12 volt source. Hopefully on the fuse box you can simply use this and connect it. That's ideal, uh, but in newer vehicles there aren't a lot of open circuits to plug into that way. So you're going to need to use a fuse tap and we provide two different ones. This one is for a mini uh, fuse. And the way that these work is that they go over the uh, outgoing side of the fuse. So you'll need to use your test light to see which side is powered um, and you're going to want to tap into the other one. That way you get the protection of this fuse for this circuit. You slip this over the edge of the fuse like that, it stands on top of the fuse, and then you can use this connector to connect to it. We provide two ring terminals with the hardware kit. The smaller is going to be used on the black wire for the ground. You're going to want to attach that to a cleaned metal surface. You may want to use some sandpaper or a similar abrasive pad to uh, scrape away any rust or dirt or paint, and you want to make sure there's a good contact between the metal and this ring terminal. The larger ring terminal is going to be used to connect the large gauge red wire to the battery positive. Now you can connect this to the uh, battery clamp itself or often there is a, a stud on the battery on the positive side that you can connect this to. To install the push-in style temperature probe, you're going to want to pick a location that is near the inlet radiator hose. That way when the hot coolant from the engine first reaches the radiator, the temperature probe will sense that and activate the fan. In order to insert the probe, you simply push it in between the fins and the tube in the radiator. If you're using the kit that has a thread in temperature probe, you'll need to find a port in the coolant passage. On a lot of engines, there are several ports available in the intake manifold. Some have it on the thermostat housing and others will have it on the cylinder head. Our kit comes with two different adapter bushings. So this allows you to use the thread in sensor in a quarter inch, three eighths inch, or half inch MPT port. Use Teflon tape or a liquid sealant on the threads. If you use the bushings, use it both on the outside threads and on the inside threads. To set the fan activation temperature, first turn the potting screw all the way clockwise. Start the engine, let the engine come up to the temperature where you want the electric fan to turn on. Then start turning the set screw counterclockwise until the fan activates. You've now set the activation temperature. You can adjust this at any time that you want, either to have the fan turn on at a higher temperature or a lower temperature.